Hey guys, Dave and Len here. Welcome to Wargame Chat. Today we're going to talk about games we're looking to get. Uh, some of the games may be new, some of them may be old, but it's stuff we got on our list of uh, must-haves. So I'll go with the stuff that's currently in production for me. GMT Space Corps and Decision Games that, or the SBI version of Alamo. Those are the two modern ones I'm looking for. As far as Decision Games, they have a few new mini games out. I, I gotta take a look and, and see if I want them or not. I probably do. So what are some of the ones okay. you're thinking again? Uh, I'm mostly uh, focused on magazine games coming up. Now not everyone has got me excited, but some I'm looking forward to. For instance, Straight and Tactus, they have one called Real Grand. It, the premise is that Maximilian stays in power and, it, and he fights a war against the United States. And that's an interesting one. Maximilian? What, yeah, Emperor Maximilian of Mexico. Oh, okay. He was the brother of the Austrian Emperor. Gotcha. And when the French withdrew, uh, his, it fell apart. But the thing was, Maximilian, when he was in power, was actually very popular with the Mexicans. Mm. But uh, once he lost the French troops, uh, it was uh, it, his side was demoralized. Okay. All right, here's uh, one for me, West End Games, Bug-Eyed Monsters. This is an uh, old game, I think it's from the 1970s or something, basically about kind of like 1950s, I don't know if it's aliens or monsters or something, kind of like B-movie stuff, but it, it's, it sounds like it would be fun to play, so I've been looking for a copy for this for a while. How about you? Okay, actually, uh, against the odds, have some uh, very interesting stuff coming out. First of all, there's Crowning Glory, the Battle of Austerlitz. It's part of my never-ending quest to have a Battle of Austerlitz game where the French win, and <laughs> which is hard to uh, recreate. Then they have Blind Fate, which is about the Hussites Wars in the late Middle Ages between the Austrian Catholics versus, uh, I forget, uh, some heretic group. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is the one that uses the uh, cannons and wagons. And the clash of carriers of the Battle of the Philippine Sea, the largest carrier battle in history. And in my opinion, a close victory for the United States. Mm. Even though part of uh, one of the phases of that battle was the uh, Marianas Turkey shoot. But until then, it was a close battle. Mm. Here's one. That, this is a very important war game. Uh, very important. It's called War Tactics or Can Britain Be Invaded? This was made, I think it was in World War I or right before World War I in Britain. The game, as far as I know, is the first game that uses like cardboard cutouts or counters. I think there are actually circles on that, but it's the first board game that did that with cardboard. And I believe it was given out for free to members of the population there uh, in order to get them uh, psyched up for World War One or something. I've never come across a issue of this for, or not an issue of this, a copy of this for sale, but I heard about someone who was managed to get one at the eBay in the United Kingdom, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping one day I come across an issue of this, I'd really like to get it. I'd, I'd rather have this than Avalon Tactics, uh, the original. Yeah. Okay, another one, Paper Wars has... Uh Got some interesting. Uh, they have the Battle of Second Fallujah, which is good. We'll have to try that one when you yeah. get it. Yeah, that's, uh, I read what they're writing about. It actually sounds very interesting. Uh, uh, not like this where you have the zombies going at it, but you actually have organized troops fighting. Mm. So, And the other one is the Santiago Campaign, which is the Spanish-American War, we need a splendid little war game about a splendid little war. <laughs> you call that a splendid war? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, once uh, uh, one American called it. Mm. Uh, Alright, next one I got, this is one I saw on Combat Board Games YouTube channel, Task Force Games, Fourth Reich. Uh, th this looks like some kind of like... I Post-World War II, the, the Third Reich still exists or something. It's kind of like a science fiction game. So this looks like something I, I definitely want to check out. Okay, next one I got is Legion uh, by Legion Games. It's called Demerax 
Demirex, I'm probably pronouncing it. Battles in Ukraine in 1919 during the Russian Civil War. Gee, uh, Ukraine's in the news lately. Yeah, yeah. So, but <laughs> this is one of those where uh, they need about 108 people to uh, pro promise to buy it before they'll publish it. And uh, I, I got Almost one. Almost kind of like a P500 or something. Yeah, uh, I know I put my bid in a couple, about two, three years ago. And uh, I don't know if it, they still remember me or not. I'm yeah, I'm sure you're still on the list. Probably not, not enough people have. Uh, uh, did you have to put up money for that, or you just put throw your name in the hat? Uh, you you have to promise. I think uh, you put it on your credit card. Oh, okay, gotcha. And, yeah, and three years is a long time to yeah. wait. And thing is, with 108, uh, I think it's like enough that there's an interest because uh, some of them uh, subjects they had before they had such a low interest they just dropped them right right because this one they need 500 and so they got uh, about 400 about 390 so hmm. so it's like well you know maybe a few more years you yeah know? so uh gmt games has that p500 thing they yeah. do with uh, uh games they may release in the future and once 500 people sign up for it they produce the game yeah Okay, we got any more? Uh, other stuff as far as war games, yeah, I'm always looking for the old and unusual stuff. To uh, basically, if I come across something that I've never heard of, and I'm pretty sure no one, not many other people, have heard of it either, uh, it's, that's the kind of game I usually want to buy because I like stuff that's unique and. Uh, uh, games that uh, are about topics that people haven't played before. Games that are just unique in some fashion. Uh, because, I, I mean, who wants to play like 50 uh, Battle of the Bulge games or something? I mean, if you're going to play World War II, why not try out a few of the less popular battles and stuff? Uh, one is not uh, one I've already ordered. It's not really a game, it's by Avalanche Press. It's called Step in Sky. It's a history of the Ukraine. Uh, for fifteen dollars, is it a book or is it a game? Well, it's a book. Oh, okay. And it's a history of the Ukraine, and they promise to give all fifteen dollars to a, a charity in Poland that's helping the refugees. And I kind of trust Mike Benatoff, mm -hmm. uh, the mad professor who runs Avalanche Press, to uh, know what he's doing. So I figured I could trust him because there, there's so many charities asking for money. I don't know who's legitimate. Or, legitimate or not, but I figure Mike knows what he's doing. Gotcha. So, I already ordered it, so it's allowed four weeks uh, for shipping, so that means about at least a year or two. So, <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to take a year or two. <laughs> the Savage <but>. Press, <laughs> it's, they're, they're becoming legendary for... Uh, oh, for being late on yeah, orders? Oh, I, well, mean, I didn't know that. Well, I think the only one that's even uh, worse is against the odds with their an uh, yearly annuals. I think they're up to, um, did I get 2017 or 2018 already? And they're promising the next one in a couple months. We'll see. <laughs> it's, well, you know, you, gotta, uh, you know that people in this industry are part-timers, so uh, you get, you, you're a little more patient mm -hmm. than you would normally. So that's basically what I'm looking yeah. forward to. Uh, one other thing I want to do on War Game Chat that we haven't done before. Why don't we, since both of us read books constantly, why don't we talk about what book we're currently uh, reading at the end of each War Game Chat. Like I, the one I'm currently reading is from 1953 called Those About to Die. It's about uh, chariot races and uh, <laughs> gladiators in Rome. I, I've, I've only read the first chapter so far, but so far it's pretty interesting and pretty engaging. I think the book has like uh, 140 pages, so you figure 20 pages pages a day I'll be done reading in about a week but so far so good uh, uh, I, I've, I've learned stuff just from reading the first chapter and it was fun to read what about you what are you reading okay uh, it's by Norman Norbert C. Pressburg it's called what a modern Ma martyr should know oh hold, hold up so they can see yeah uh, basically, if you die, you don't get 72 virgins, you get a 30-year-old woman uh, who's blind, so. <laughs> uh, uh, what it is, is this guy's done a lot of research with French and German scholars that Americans are not familiar with. Mm. And there's one noted um, scholar, Christoph Luxemburg, that's his alias, and uh, 
he discovered that the Quran was originally written in Aramaic, which was the common language of uh, Syria and the Near East, and then translated into um, Arabic. And the problem is, at times, the translation did not fit well. And so some parts of the Quran are misinterpreted, or some parts are actually incoherent. So, and uh, a few other pictures. It, oh, it's called the New Picture of Islam. It uh, kind of breaks the standard Islamic narrative, the SIN. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks. That's all we have for this week. We'll have something new next week. Have a good evening.